Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, February 21st. Question for you watching this morning. Do you have a favorite TV show you tend to watch over and over again? A lot of us do. Do you have one? Uh, well, it, it changes. Now mm -hmm. it's the one that I'm watching over and over. It's because of my daughter. She loves the proposal with uh, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, so it's not a TV show. It's a movie. Yeah, so the movie, but right. then the TV show, oddly enough, is Stranger Things, right. which I'm I'm not opposed to because there's a lot of 80s stuff on there. So that's what I like about it. I think she likes the, the teen drama. I get that. I don't have a comfort show, but my son does. He's one of those people that can watch The Office over and over and over and over. So you could probably name a, a lot of characters and quotes from these comfort shows and their lines. Many of us do, and we have a little bit more about why we do that. Often with comfort shows, they're people that we can resonate with. They're stories that we can resonate with or they're stories we wish we could resonate with. They kind of give us a break from the normal things that are going on in life right now. Makes sense. Dr. Childs is a psychologist and says there are all kinds of reasons people enjoy comfort shows. Some like them because they already know what's going to happen in the end and other other people like them because it makes them feel nostalgic or happy. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a comfort show, according to the experts, but Dr. Childs says it's important to make sure it's used as a positive distraction. If you find that the comfort show is not providing comfort, if it's bringing you down or if it's you're more living in the comfort show than you are in reality, then it might be time to reach out to a trusted friend or reach out to a therapist to talk about what's really bothering you. That's why 90 Day Fiance is not my comfort <laughs> show. Uh, no. so comfort shows aren't always comedies either. They come in different genres, even true crime documentaries. Very interesting. I've never thought of it that way, but it makes perfect sense. It does, especially movies. Justin, do you have a favorite movie or show that you can watch anytime it's on, no matter what? As a policy, I don't watch movies more than once. I just, uh, once I've seen it, I've seen it. That's a policy? That's my policy. Okay. I, I can see that. Uh, <laughs> if, if I'm going with shows, I can watch Seinfeld over and over. It, makes me laugh, yeah, uh, even yeah. if I know the episode, but that's that's probably the only one for me. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. It's funny, it makes sense. It's good, yeah. it's good, it's relatable. Uh, we've got some uh, clouds out there this morning, guys. Uh, we've been watching fog and cloud cover kind of stick around. Now, low clouds are always uh, notoriously tricky around here as, as to how long they'll stick around, but I think through about lunchtime, you'll see uh, the low gray clouds, and then the sun breaks out this afternoon, and we'll get uh, into a warm day. 62 right now, 62 Gonzalez, 60 in Hondo. All those locations I just mentioned are uh, underneath that cloud deck. Uh, there are some breaks up towards Curvo and Fredericksburg and Junction and down towards Victoria, but everyone else uh, looking at overcast conditions. That includes here around Bear County where we are on the low 60s right now. It's been a warm morning, warm and fairly foggy. Uh, there's like some of the visibilities uh, down in spots, uh, places like Hondo, and a Kerrville, but uh, nothing that's too, too bad. As we look towards downtown, you can see the haze, but it's not uh, terribly thick here in San Antonio. Right now, 62 at the airport, 63 in Seguin, 57 in Bernie, and uh, 58 in Kerrville. Our forecast today, noontime 66, clouds start to break up right around lunchtime, and then we break out in the mostly sunny skies this afternoon. High temperature, 77. Uh, it'll be a warm one, but not as warm as it's going to be tomorrow. 80s, mid-80s on the map. We're going to talk more about that forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look at uh, Transkai, see how things are looking out there right now. We do have one accident working. Uh, this is at westbound 1604 in the heart of the construction zone out there at Northwest Military. Westbound 1604 at Northwest Military. It's on the right shoulder. We have stalls at eastbound 151 at Callahan and also at eastbound Loop 410 and Somerset Road. Looks good so far. For now, let's look at today's 9 and 9. An autopsy is being performed to determine how 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham died after her body was found in an East Texas River yesterday. She'd been missing since last Thursday. The suspect in the case, Don Stephen McDougal, was taken into custody last week on an unrelated charge. He could be facing capital murder charges. 
Prosecutors say they have charged two men with murder for the deadly shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade last week. But more arrests could be coming. They are trying to gather more evidence. And prior to that, two teens were charged with resisting arrest and firearm violations. Those applying for American citizenship can expect higher fees for the process. On April 1st, the cost of application to naturalize will go up about 20 percent. And the cost of a green card, the first step in citizenship, will increase as well. Immigration attorneys are urging all who are planning to apply for citizenship to consider submitting an application before those prices go up. Walmart is seeing strong sales again. The retailer says they rose 4% in the last quarter, but for the first time in two years, shoppers spent less per trip due in part to slowing inflation. And the company is now warning that revenue growth could slow down this year. One of the most exclusive clubs for companies is getting a new member. Amazon is being added to the 30 companies that make up the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is replacing Walgreens. The switch will take place before trading starts on Monday. Luggage fees are going up again for travelers flying on American Airlines. Paying to check a bag at the airport will now cost 40 bucks, up from 30. A second bag will cost 45. However, the airline is offering a small discount if you pay to check your bag in advance. Get ready to repair or replace your big appliances more often as things like ovens and refrigerators get more features. They're also prone to breaking. Requests for quotes for repairs are up nearly 60% on Yelp. The maker of the Stanley Cup is getting sued. Some customers have filed multiple lawsuits claiming the company failed to disclose their tumblers contained lead. Stanley says it's in sealing material used to secure insulation around the base. The company says it's not anywhere that would come into contact with customers, and there have been no reports of health complications caused by tumblers. There is a workaround for students who have hit a roadblock filling out their federal financial aid forms for the 2024-25 school year. Some students haven't been able to complete their FAFSA form because their parents don't have social security numbers, but the education department says it's working on fixing that glitch. In the meantime, students can now at least fill out the form and actually submit it incomplete until the issue is fully resolved next month. And that is today's Night at Night. Police, fire, or EMS will respond with just a phone call, but what if there is a mental health crisis? San Antonio police are considering possibly adding a fourth option for mental health when you call 911. The idea was raised during a council committee meeting yesterday. Garrett Berger tells us what's keeping them from going ahead with that idea. Shootings, fires, car crashes. Mixed in with all these are less straightforward 911 calls tied to someone's mental health. As many times... These are calls that our officers probably don't even need to be connected to. Last year, 32 and a half thousand 911 calls for San Antonio police were related to mental health. That number has been growing for years. Top brass at SAPD in the city of San Antonio say they're discussing whether there could be a fourth option for when you dial 911. Police, fire, EMS, or mental health. Those mental health callers could get connected to a clinician who could vet the call and maybe avoid sending police entirely. We could handle that through the clinician and through services, um, the mental health services side of it. Uh, it. It would benefit everybody. The biggest hurdle is getting the right people. Those clinicians will be hired through the Center for Health Care Services and, and, and the personnel um, being hired is probably the biggest challenge. Well, I'm glad that the uh, city and uh, the police department are talking about moving forward with this. Doug Beach heads up the local branch of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. He thinks a mental health option could make 911 callers more confident that the person they're connecting to is ready to receive their call and see it as a mental health issue and not a crime in progress. So after the Melissa Perez shooting, which was last summer, uh, where Melissa Perez was shot and killed, we had many calls where people said, I don't want to call the police department. I'm afraid of what will happen when I call. The city has already expanded its SA Corps mental health response program to be citywide. And by this summer, the combined teams of police, firefighters, and mental health clinicians are supposed to start providing coverage around the clock, too. A fourth option on 911 calls might not be far behind. It'll be up to city leadership and Chief McManus, but I, re I realistically could see it probably in a year or so. I think the sooner the better. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. On to other news this morning. 
Early voting is continuing today for the Texas primary election, and the polls are open until 6 tonight. You can find a list of polling locations by scanning the QR code on the bottom left side of your screen. When you scan that QR code, it should look something like this. You're going to have to scroll down past the election stories, and then you'll find the resources section. If you click on the first article, it will take you to our web story that has all the polling locations, the times, sample ballots, and you're going to find the information about what to bring to vote. 908, 62 degrees. Still ahead on the Wednesday edition of GMSA at 9. Well, studies show that diabetes is leading to more amputations. Well, coming up, some simple things that you can do to stay healthy. Plus, for the last 10 years, a local radio host has been inspiring the African-American community through music and entertainment. Katrina Weber introduces us to them after the break. This Best of Mutton Busted, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Last ride was pretty good. Yeah, she was. The busting of muttons is almost over yeah. for this year. Well, with a computer, microphone, and internet access, one man is helping San Antonio keep its finger on the pulse of the local African American community. He is the owner and voice of WSAN Radio, an online source of music, information, and entertainment. As Katrina Weber shows us, the daily broadcast originates from a hub of history. Well, good morning again, everybody. Good morning. We are here live. Inside. Whether morning, noon, or night, Ronald Gordon is there, trying to spread good through the airwaves. The lifelong music lover revels in sharing his passion with the public. My dad will play music all the time, and we call it cleanup music. That was Motown. When you heard that Motown sound, you had to get up. Ten years ago, he started up what is now WSAN yeah. Radio. Among the music, it also offers motivation and messages targeting the African-American community. Voting is mighty important. It's coming up March 5th, the primary voting. Gordon wasn't always this smooth of a talker. The Illinois native says he struggled with stuttering as a child. I mean, I was ashamed to talk. I got beat up. I was bullied. I was all that. Somehow, when he turned on a microphone, he found magic. He began working in his free time as a DJ at parties, then in regular radio before going out on his own. These days, he has plenty of company, nearly 40,000 listeners. We just have fun just messing with each other because yes. that's the family that we have and do things that we do. He also has help from people like Sharon Bell Moses, who hosts an entertainment segment. We have a bunch of fun. He's a big brother. Uh, I respect Ron very much. Uh, he's putting a lot into the community. That includes more than his time. Gordon self-finances the entire WSAN operation. His station is non-traditional, offered strictly online and through an app, and in a non-traditional place. A former church, now the Williams Historical National Museum, currently serves as its headquarters. As Gordon and his station blaze trails in the world of radio, it's only appropriate that they do it in this space, among the images of those who've also made a lasting impression. I feel blessed that I can wake up in the morning and do something that I really like doing. Thousands of listeners seem to like it too. Why Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, temperatures are up, humidity is up, but one of the main topics of conversation around here as we get closer, of course, is the upcoming solar event. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we get more excited about it every day that uh, we get closer. It is going to be a topic of conversation over the next month or so. So just, just be ready. We're, we're going to talk about it a lot uh, because we're going to have crews all over. Uh, we're going to be covering this extensively. and We're going to be passing along random facts to you each and every day about the eclipse. And so now that we're 47 days away, cool. here is today's fact. Our friends down at Eagle Pass will be the first city in the United States to experience totality. Pretty cool. It starts in Mexico. And then Eagle Pass is the first uh, city in the U.S. Uh, then it makes its way up to Maine. That's where it will end as it passes through the United States. Pretty cool. We're 47 days away. 
47. Uh, we're getting closer and uh, we'll have more facts for you coming up. Taking a look outside, yes, uh, there is some fog, some low visibility, but it's not as bad as it looks here. We're looking through a lot of atmosphere, so this always looks more ominous than it is. But there is downtown as we look from our south side camera here. Uh, it's 63 right now, 63 in the brothel, 63 in Zagin, 57 in Bernie, 58 in Kerrville. We've got a southerly wind for the most part, uh, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. This wind is actually, I think, what helped us out this morning. Kind of kept a lot of the fog at bay, at least here in town. Uh, when you have stronger winds, it tends to mix up the atmosphere and you just don't get as much fog. Uh, now, we have had quite a bit of fog out to the west, Hondo, Bernie Stage, Kerrville, but these numbers are improving, so the fog is lifting. That doesn't mean the little clouds are lifting, though. They're still there, and this is a look at one of our forecasts. It does show the low clouds around through maybe noontime. This is 12 o'clock. The cloud deck is shrinking. But as long as it's there, it's going to keep temperatures down a little bit, uh, mid 60s. But then as the sun pops out, then your temperatures really start to jump up. 73 by 2 o'clock, you'll be near 80 in some spots, and then we'll top out in the low to mid 80s. Places like Pearsall and Carrizo Springs here in San Antonio, probably upper 70s. Right now we're shooting for 77 this afternoon. So pretty similar to yesterday, it's just that we have these clouds to start. Uh, and you can see that low cloud deck. They're always kind of tricky to forecast, but I can see that we're already starting to see some erosion there in the hill country. So uh, I think we've already kind of started the process of seeing uh, shrink a little bit. As we look at the bigger picture, and you'll notice across Texas, it is pretty quiet, but we've got a storm system that's starting to approach from the west. And what that's going to do is allow for fire danger to start to kick up out west today. You'll see some very strong winds, very low humidity out here. Uh, and that will pose a pretty big fire threat. And then on the flip side, we've had a lot of fog along the Gulf Coast, a lot of moisture there. So you can kind of see the contrast. A lot of humidity surging north. Out west, you've got a lot of dry air. Dew points are in the single digits out here. That dry air, by the way, makes a move towards us. So by tomorrow morning, we're still humid. But by the afternoon, boom, there comes the dry air. We've got lower humidity levels by Thursday, Friday, probably Saturday too. It's going to feel nice. And what that's going to do is allow for cooler mornings. Afternoons will still be warm, but the, the mornings will feel a lot better. We won't be having these uh, sticky mornings that we've been seeing the last couple days. So there's the dew point forecast as we get into tonight, still in the 60s, into tomorrow morning. We start off with some fog and clouds. That front comes through and then we dry out pretty quickly thereafter. So the extended forecast, 84 tomorrow. Even with the front coming through, we'll get a uh, good northwesterly wind, and that actually warms us up a little bit. Uh, once that dry air moves in, though, you see the morning lows dip into the 40s and 50s, and the afternoons will be in the 70s. Sunday will be pretty warm, and then we're back in the 80s by next week. Back in the 80s is okay. Back in the 80s, one of my favorite decades. Me too. Me too. <laughs> That's where I was thinking you guys are going to go with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it was. Music was good. Temperatures, too. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. 919 in the present decade, 62 degrees. <laughs> Mid-air scares continue to happen across the country. And when we come back, David Sears is going to tell us about the latest incidents being reported and shares what a passenger on one of the flights says happened when another passenger tried to open the exit door after takeoff. In your morning headlines, a lesson for parents of children who love to dig holes when they go to the beach and several recent incidents involving planes and passengers. Plus, the soccer superstar is raising a lot of attention in ticket prices and a couple got married and had a baby all at the same time. David Sears is here with your morning headlines. Morning, literally. It's like one stop shopping right here. <laughs> we'll have that for you in a second. Let's start with this though. It was a tragic end to a day at the beach. That is a huge hole on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. You can see it's surrounded by tape and those cones. That's the scene where a child died and another one taken to the hospital for something kids do on the beach every day, dig in the sand. The brother and sister were buried in a 10 foot deep hole in that beach. First responders were able to get to the children, get them out of the hole and to the hospital. Unfortunately, the little girl died. I mean, you saw grown men digging with shovels and buckets and nobody could find her. If you are headed to the beach this spring or summer, here is a tip from the National Park Service. Do not dig a hole any deeper than your knees when you're actually standing in that hole and make sure you always fill it in before you leave. 
All right, seems like a lot of mishaps and scary moments on planes and on the ground with a plane coming at you. So let's start with this one. You're on a plane, you look out the window and you see all that right there. What in the world is going on with that wing? Material on that wing literally ripping apart. This was a United flight heading from San Francisco to Boston with 165 passengers on board. The crew diverted to Denver for an emergency landing. The plane, an older, not sure how old, but an older 757. Another pretty scary moment on board American Airlines flight. Some guy decided he wanted to try to open the exit door. You're watching a couple of other passengers wrestle him and get him away from the door. They got him on the floor, then wrapped him up with duct tape until the pilots got the plane on the ground. He already had the, the safety mechanism down. He had both hands on the lever and he was like yanking it. And he's a big dude and he had it, you know, pretty well pulled. And we, I don't know if you could hear it, but I could hear the actual difference in pressure. There was a whistling. The pilot got the plane back to Albuquerque. The guy was taken into custody. The FBI is investigating, but here's one more for you. Take a look at New York. That is a single engine plane with some mechanical problems. The pilot couldn't get back to the airport, so he put it down on the Long Island Highway. No one on the ground seriously hurt. Neither was the pilot. Not so much for the plane, though. All right, soccer fans all excited. It's time for Messi Mania. We are talking about Lionel Messi, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, soccer players ever. He's going to take the pitch today. If you want to see him play in person, though, you're going to have to dig a little deeper into your pocket. Messi plays for the Miami team of the MLS. He played a shortened season last year, but this year he is full-time. The average price for a ticket this year to see him in person, 185 bucks. Doesn't sound like a whole lot until you realize the ticket price last year was just $27, a mere 585% increase. Messi is worth it, though. StubHub says all 29 teams have seen an increase in sales. The Miami team, the most in demand, obviously. All right, and finally this morning, if you're going to get married and have a baby, why not do it all at the same time and in the same place? Let's take it to Missouri, meet baby Oliver. So mom and dad thought they had several weeks before Oliver was going to be born so they could get married before he arrived. Didn't happen that way. Oliver was five weeks early because he apparently wanted to attend his parents' wedding in person. But Sarah wasn't having that. She was having contractions. Her water broke, so she headed to the hospital. The doctors told her she couldn't leave the hospital, so there go those wedding plans. Oh, but wait. Just so happened an ordained minister was waiting for his child to be born and offered to marry the couple right then and there before Oliver was born. They didn't have a lot of time, so the staff got some blankets for a gown, some gauze for a veil, and a bouquet of Valentine flowers, and between contractions, some I do's. Here today to celebrate not only the love and commitment of Sarah and Brandon. We wanted to be married before our son was now, born. Now, since we have a baby on the way, let's get to the I do's. I literally blinked and I was married and a dad within 12 hours. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> just a feeling of comfort and love and warmth instantaneously. Well, that, my friends, is a story to tell for the entire family. So here's the recap. They got to the hospital on the morning of the 13th, got married that evening. Then Oliver showed up the next day on Valentine's Day. Oliver doing well, hopes to go home later on this week. Aww. What a great story. Yeah. Love that. So, and those yeah. anniversaries and birthdays should be easy to remember. Easy to remember all at the same time. Yeah. You're going to need a box to hold all the greeting cards you'll need for those events Aww. one day. I love the wedding outfit, though. Yeah. Blankets and gauze. You yeah. think those nurses were all excited to help her out? Oh, I I'm they sure. Were. <laughs> yep. Good stuff. Great good news. David, thank, thank you. you. Well, there's a lot more head on GMSA at 9. Right now it's 927. This includes doctors who say they are seeing an increase in complications from diabetes, causing patients to lose limbs. We're going to tell you about changes you can make and the programs that are out there to keep you healthy. And CNBC finance experts say San Antonio is in the top three cities for the best U.S. metro area for first-time home buyers. But the real estate market can be confusing. Still to come, what economists are currently recommending for home buyers. Let's look out there with live cam. Things warming up a little bit, 63 degrees, but we know we're going to see more sun a little later this afternoon, Justin. Yeah, we will. And in fact, it, you can kind of see a little bit of thinning of the clouds here. So these little clouds are going to lift, and by lunchtime, you'll see more sun this afternoon. It's going to be another really warm day. Uh, a lot of people are asking about pollen count. We're sort of in transition season here, so we're moving out of the cedar season it's gone but we're moving into the uh, other tree pollens ash and mulberry have been around for the better part of a week 
but we know that oak is also right around the corner. So far, we have not seen that yet, and everything is low. So all is well today. As you look across the country, San Antonio is one of the warmest spots this morning. If it felt warm outside to you for February, you're right. Uh, Dallas and San Antonio both at 63. Miami is the only city there that beats us at 65. Um, most of the country, though, looking at pretty mild weather. you got to go up to Minneapolis and uh, which uh, International Falls, not Wichita Falls, International Falls, 24 there, Caribou uh, is 11. Those are the two cold spots. And across Texas, a lot of moisture pouring in, so this is allowing temperatures to stay rather elevated this morning. Our forecast, uh, we'll see the clouds stick around again through about noontime, and then you'll start to see them melt away, and then uh, that will allow us to get into the 70s in many spots, uh, if not 80s. 80 in Divine today, 82 Pearsall, 77 is what we're forecasting. San Antonio, Seguin, and Gonzales. Uh, even warmer tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be pushing mid 80s by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we'll look at that forecast and get you updated for the weekend too. Coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. If you saw our show yesterday, you might remember Carlos Aguilar's story. He has diabetes and recently came very close to getting part of his foot amputated. So he turned things around. He ate more healthy food, lost some weight, got medical attention, and was able to save his foot. Doctors in Bear County want to see more people like Carlos. They say too many people in our community are losing their limbs because of complications with diabetes. But as Stefania Jimenez reports, there are things you could do to stay healthy and avoid amputations. Let's talk numbers. According to the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District, more than 280,000 people in Bear County have diabetes. And the best way to prevent complications from the illness is to eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly, check your blood sugar, and take your medicine correctly. Dr. John Hogg, radiologist and founder of the Medical Vein Clinic in San Antonio, recommends that diabetics do two other things, check their feet and legs. If your legs are heavy or swelling or you see bulging veins, if you're starting to see discoloration, a lot of people start getting this dark brown. That's from red blood cells that have died in your leg because the veins couldn't move them back uphill to get oxygen. More than 60% of his patients at the medical vein clinic have diabetes, so he says helping patients avoid amputations is a key part of his job. The treatment is we close that bad vein and so that it's not doing that. Rather than taking out, we just get it to shrivel up mm -hmm. and we have you on a walking program afterwards and you generate your new pathways through existing little veins. Here's something else. Men are more likely than women to get amputations as a result of diabetes. That's why San Antonio Metro Health started something called the Diabetes Garage. And it uses car analogies to explain diabetes care and maintenance. Julius Hunter coordinates the program. He wants you to think of the Diabetes Garage as a club. It's exclusively for men in Bear County. Members gather for a series of free workshops over four weeks so they can learn how to prevent or manage diabetes. What do you do when that check engine light comes on? Usually most people's response is, hey, well, I need to go take it to the mechanic. Same thing with your body. It's important to go and get those things checked at your doctor. In keeping with the car theme, the men who attend the workshops also get a literal toolbox just like this. And yes, some things inside actually are for their vehicles, but other items also serve a function. They have a purpose like this car mirror, which diabetics can use to check the bottom of their feet for source like the one Carlos Aguilar had and got rid of after he got medical care and changed his diet. Absolutely. That was Stephanie Jimenez reporting. Now, we did this story because we want you to know there is help out there and there are places you can go and learn more about how to manage diabetes. The flyer on your screen is inviting men to the Diabetes Garage. If you want to register for a workshop, look for the story on our website at kset.com. In other news, there's a lot of frustration from people who help teens in our community recover from addiction. They need money to do that, and they say there is money, but it just hasn't gotten to them yet. Our Patty Santos tells us where that money is. These pictures were taken when Ryan York was deep in his addiction to heroin, meth, oxycodone and other drugs. When he walked into Ryan's Recovery's high school, he wasn't sure he'd live to see the next day. The first day I stepped foot in Ryan's Recovery, I was very scared. I was lonely and I, I didn't know that I would survive. 
Fast forward two years later, the now 17-year-old has a high school diploma and a job at the very nonprofit that helped turn his life around. You feel good today? You have plans for tomorrow? I do, and I look forward to tomorrow. Rye's recovery made a difference in his entire family. My, my father was an addict himself. He was an alcoholic. And through this program, he had recognized his own alcoholism, and he's 18 months of sobriety today. A wonderful outcome that Evita Maureen worries some people are missing out on. I've been to too many funerals in San Antonio of kids who didn't get the help they needed when they needed it. Evita is the CEO of Rice Recovery and says there are millions of dollars on hold that could help many more families. We continue to wait, and teenagers continue to die and that is not okay. Bear County got $14.5 million from lawsuit settlements with opioid manufacturers and distributors. About $1.5 million was used to provide Narcan to Bear County Sheriff deputies and to double substance use treatment for women in Casa Mia. But nearly a dozen agencies like Rise Recovery, Alpha Home, and Lifetime are still waiting to get some of the millions left over. We are not yet hearing about when a due date, deadline, apl formal application, process, review, anything um, is going to happen of, around the opioid litigation funding. KSAT emailed the commissioner's court to ask about the holdup. We haven't heard back. In the meantime, Rise Recovery hopes to make do with funding from other places like the federal government, which the county will decide on next month. I know you guys never turn people away here, no. but how much more could you do if you had extra funding? We could serve thousands more kids if we could receive the opioid funding that is necessary to address this epidemic in a real way. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. 938, 63 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Well, there's uncertainty about the Federal Reserve's next moves now that it's paused interest rate hikes. So what should people looking to buy a house do now? Coming up, we're going to talk about how to navigate the current real estate market. It is always a great day to go to the San Antonio Zoo, and let's take a look at one of our zoo cams out there right now, some activity in the water. And if you want a joke that's safe for the kiddos, what kind of bird works at a construction site? Hmm. Does it have to do with crane? It does. Okay. A Some, crane. A crane. crane. Oh. Okay. Yeah, crane. Yeah. I'm just looking at the screen. Is it a whooping crane? You're making it harder than it had to be. And if you think of a meme with a constraint with a little hard hat on, that it works even oh, better. Oh, yeah. that's Very too cute. cute. But uh, there's well done. the crane exhibit out at our zoo. Aww. <laughs> I like that. We're going to have to come up with some more jokes. Yeah. That could be the new thing. That's a, yeah. that's a good idea, Mark. Yeah, I like it. Uh, we got to go back in history, guys. 1996. Uh, if you were here in San Antonio, you may remember this date. We hit 100 on this day in 1996. But it's not only that, February of 1996 was a wacky month. Hmm. We started off really cold with some ice, got all the way down to 19 on the 4th of February, but by the 21st, we hit 100, which still holds, uh, that still is the record for the highest, uh, warmest February day here in San Antonio. Uh, and then we ended the month on another cold note. We dropped all the way back down to 34 on the last day of the month. So what what a crazy uh, roller coaster here back in 1996, but just a little bit of a throwback. Uh, we're not going to see that kind of roller coaster ride this go around. Now it is going to be warm, but we're not talking 100s here. Uh, 84 tomorrow, 73 Friday, 74 Saturday. Pretty comfortable. Above average, yes, but uh, just goes to show you it, it could be worse. February is one of those months where we literally can see just about anything from tornadoes to rain to snow. We've seen it all. Uh, it's kind of a transition month for us. Uh, 63 right now. We've got southerly winds at about nine miles per hour. Cloudy, kind of hazy conditions. Uh, there has been a little bit of fog here and there. And as we look at the cloud cover, starting to see this shrink a little bit. So this, the northern extent of those clouds starting to uh, kind of break apart. So it looks like we may get some clearing here in San Antonio a little earlier uh, than we first forecast. But uh, if you're south San Antonio, clouds will hold on a little bit longer. It's always uh, you know, kind of a, uh, a tricky concept to figure out exactly where these clouds are going to set up and how long they'll last. But that's the general idea right now. 65 
in New Braunfels. The sun's trying to come out there. 62 in Austin, 59 in Cloudy at Hondo, 64 in Carrizo Springs and Cloudy out in Del Rio, 63 there. Uh, right around 63 here in San Antonio. So it's been a warm, humid morning. Our forecast today by noontime, I think the clouds really do start to break up. 66. And once we get the sun, that'll get us into the upper 70s for highs. 77 is what we're looking for this afternoon here in San Antonio. Pretty close to what we were looking at yesterday. Uh, then down into the 60s tonight. And just like this morning, we'll see clouds and fog redevelop by tomorrow. What we're waiting on is a storm system out to the west. Now, uh, right now it is producing rain and some snow across parts of Utah and Arizona. This storm system is going to kind of move to the north, so it doesn't bring us any rain. But what it does do is draw in some drier air uh, from the west. So we'll start to see these dew points uh, really come down tomorrow afternoon. A lot of that dry air is out in West Texas today, and that spreads towards us by tomorrow. So uh, by tomorrow afternoon, we'll have dew points back in the 20s and 30s, so some very dry air. And as you know, dry air warms up and cools down very efficiently. So that means that by uh, the time we get into, say, Friday morning, uh, we'll see some cooler temperatures. Uh, there's like the dew point forecast. Still humid through tomorrow morning, and then we get the drop off in dew points. So the extent of forecast. We'll go 84 tomorrow. Yes, still very warm. But once we get some of that drier air, we get down to 50 Friday morning and then a high of 73, down to 47 Saturday. Saturday's going to be a gorgeous day. 74, mostly sunny. 78, mostly sunny on Sunday. And then we bounce back into the 80s by next week. Only a very, very small chance of rain, it looks like, by midweek next week, guys. Okay, got it. Thank you, Justin. It's been a wild ride the past few years, particularly when it comes to the U.S. economy. And there is uncertainty about the Federal Reserve's next moves now that it paused interest rate hikes and signaled cuts this year. So for those looking to buy a home where lower rates can translate into big savings, the process can be daunting. So what should you do? ABC's Elizabeth Schulze offers advice on how to navigate the current real estate market. Not since the 1980s to early 2000s have interest rates been this high. What we are seeing in the housing market is right now we are living through a record housing affordability shock. According to Freddie Mac, the average rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage is now more than 6.5%, a sharp increase compared to more than 3.6% two years ago. Experts say higher interest rates and low supply are complicating home buying efforts. If you look at national listings across the U.S., we have 40 percent fewer listings today than we had in 2019. So if you're trying to shop for a home, don't think that you're going to be flush with options. Deciding whether to buy a home depends on your situation. I think the best thing to do for most people is to be patient uh, because rates are likely to come down. People's incomes are likely to improve. The economy is strong and creating lots of jobs and wage growth is solid. And I do think sellers are going to become uh, more willing to deal. But if you can't afford the house you want, trying to time the market might not be worth it. Home prices could go up if you wait, because if interest rates come down, that could maybe encourage more people to come into the market. So it really needs to come down to why are you buying? Are you buying because you need stability, because you need a good school district? Well, then maybe you want to buy now if you find a house that you like and refinance later. When you're ready to buy, economists say it's ideal to have a good credit score. The higher it is, the lower your mortgage rate. Also shop around for different loan officers. Mortgage rates vary wildly depending on the loan officer that you use. So just because you've talked to one loan officer and they've given you a certain quote, make sure you do your research. Consider adjustable rate mortgages and think about buying a new home as opposed to an existing one. New homes are more available. Builders are building and they are effectively cutting price through you know, interest rate buy downs and other forms of incentive. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell has indicated the central bank is on track to cut interest rates three times this year, a move that could begin as early as May. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Now to a couple of recalls. Thousands of Jeeps are being recalled due to an issue with the defrosting system. This is for 2021 through 24 Jeep Wranglers and 2022 through 24 Jeep Grand Cherokees. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the software error could decrease a driver's visibility. So dealers will update the software free of charge and letters will be mailed to owners April 5th. 
Hyundai Genesis also being recalled, this one due to a potential fire risk. Water could enter the starter solenoid and cause an electrical short. So far, there are no reports of injuries or deaths related to this issue. Dealers will install a remedy relay kit for free. In the meantime, Genesis owners are asked to park outside and away from buildings. Time now is 9.49 and 63 degrees for now. Well, a new movie with Margaret Qualley, Pedro Pascal, and Matt Damon is in theaters this Friday. We have a preview of Drive Away Dolls after the break. A new movie coming to theaters this weekend mixes friendship, murder, and one very memorable road trip. It looks funny, but it is rated R. CNN's David Daniel gives us a look at the movie Drive Away Dolls and talk with the stars. What? I'm leaving town. I am too. That was my plan. Where are you going? Tallahassee, Florida. I've been unhappy. That's why we take this trip together, honey babe. We get our act together together. Margaret Qualley and Geraldine Viswanathan hit. The supporting cast includes Beanie Feldstein, Coleman Domingo, Pedro Pascal, Bill Camp, and Matt Damon. Save the sanctimony and hand over the million smackers. I was a fan of everyone involved and knew that they'd be brilliant and just wanted to bring my A game. It all just came very naturally and, and easily, our chemistry and- She said um, it. We just, it was, <laughs> it was right there. You know, it's it, a total dream to play. You're just trying to do it justice. You're trying to like make a person that can say these things and get away with it. Who are you? Why do women curse like that? I have like a stuffed animal personality and I don't like yelling or hurting people, but I also grew up with brothers and like had to stick up for myself at a certain point. And so it was unbelievably fun to fight and win against like grown men. What the hell? Yeah, we forgot to tell you about the swab guy's head in the hat box. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What do we think? Good. Interesting. Well, Interesting. and Margaret Qualley, who you saw in those yeah. interviews, you did some research and you discovered. Yeah, Andy McDowell's uh, daughter. I, had, I didn't know Margaret that. Margaret Qualley, yeah. She looks like a mom. Yeah, she does. Interesting. Uh, it does look like an uh, interesting but funny movie. Yeah. Uh, you saw the seven day there uh, earlier. There we go. 84 uh, coming up tomorrow. We'll start off humid with some fog and clouds, but we end up very dry. Humidity uh, falls behind that front. Uh, so that really is the main impact. Uh, 73 Friday, we'll get some cooler mornings. 47 on Saturday to start. 52 on Sunday to start, and then we end up pretty nice during the afternoon. So uh, this is the last weekend of the rodeo. Looks good if you have plans to head out there. Yeah, it looks nice so far. Did you want one for the road as far as um, bird jokes? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, I've got one. Uh, thank you, Google. Uh, oh, we've got this here, too. Yeah. I didn't see that. Sorry. Oh, Some people are posting on social media about the new Wimby billboards going up has become the newest ambassador for Louis Vuitton. So in an interview with GQ, he said this partnership represents, quote, French excellence. The company wrote in a statement, quote, like Louis Vuitton himself, the young athlete has blazed a trail, excelling in a career that is only just the beginning. Congratulations, Wimby. More jokes right here on GMSA. <laughs> right. Bye, guys.